Hi, everyone. We were on hiatus last week, and I want to start tonight by saying how happy and lucky I feel to be back with you, as well as how upset I am by this incredibly sad moment of American history we're all living through. Many events brought us here, but the focus is the brutal killing of George Floyd, a black man at the hands of a Minnesota policeman. As a white man, I can't speak of the deep-rooted and justified fear African Americans have when encountered by police. So here is late night writer Amber Ruffin. Let me tell you a story. So once when I was a teenager, I was brand new to driving and I dropped my friend off at work and I'm coming back home and I'm in morning rush hour traffic and everybody is going over the speed limit. I think it's like 40 and everyone is going 50 and I hate it because I'm new to driving, it's too scary. And when I slow down, it disrupts traffic. So I speed up to 45, that's five miles over the speed limit. That's as fast as I'm willing to go. Um, and I know I'm going too slow and I'm in an unfamiliar part of town and people are whizzing by me. So to make myself feel better, I turn on Busta Rhymes and I friggin' blast it so that, um, you know, I can calm down and b blasting Busta Rhymes is something that I recommend if you're a teenager who is unsure of themselves. So I get to a good pace and I start feeling normal. And just then I encounter a speed trap and no one is slowing down. We are all speeding, um, me least of all. So to my right, there is an old white cop standing on the side of the road. And out of these tens of cars, he sees a young black person driving a purple car blasting rap music and he chooses me and he's screaming at me. He is shouting as if I have murdered someone. Like on a scale of one to 10, he is at a 27. And he goes, pull the car over, pull the goddamn car over right now, mother That is what this cop is screaming at me. And I think this is how I die. This man is going to kill me. And I start crying. I am bawling because I am 100% sure that this man is going to drag me out of my car, beat me to death. And you know, tomorrow on the news, everyone will be like, she didn't seem angry, but who knows? So I pull over and I stop. He goes, pull the car. He's shouting, it does not stop. So he gets up to the car and he puts his hand on the door and he goes to um, start yelling and he sees me. He sees a teenage girl whose um, face is wet with tears and I'm just braced trying to think of all the good things that have happened in my life so that I get to heaven thankful instead of angry. And he looks me in the eye and he um, drops it and goes, oh, okay, well, uh, just, it's okay. Just let me have your ID and, you know, he's taken aback. He goes from a 27 to a negative two. His whole demeanor changes and it's as if he wasn't the guy who was just screaming at me. He's a totally different guy. All of a sudden he's nice. So, um, I give him my ID. He sends me on my way without a warning because once he saw a teenage girl, <laughs> shouting was no longer fun. Uh, look, I have a thousand stories like this. The cops have pulled a gun on me. The cops have followed me to my own home. And every black person I know has a few stories like that. Many have more than a few. Black people leave the house every day knowing that at any time, we could get murdered by the police. It's a lot. And sometimes when you see news footage like we have seen the past week and you hear people chalking it up to a few bad apples instead of how corrupt an entire system is, it becomes too much. And that's what I wanted to say. And I wanted to end this with something hopeful to you know, provide some comfort, but maybe it's time to get uncomfortable.